Hello, it's Wisdom Wednesday, May 31st, 2017, last day of the month. Hopefully you have far exceeded all of your revenue and profit goals for the month. As always, I'll start off today on Wisdom Wednesday by sharing my Rhino of the Day from my collection. This is a stuffed little gray, cute little baby Rhino. And so there he is, little Rhino, kind of such a baby, he can't even stand up on his legs yet. How about that? Uh, speaking of not standing up on the legs, uh, is today's a topic on Wednesday, uh, Wisdom Wednesday, actually, is I had a conversation, as I do many, with uh, struggling business owners, because that's who contacts me a lot. They have waited until it's pretty much too late to rescue their business. They're looking for a miracle worker. The good news is they found one. That's me. I regularly, routinely work miracles for businesses that are rolling along because then we can really scale them up into the stratosphere but even somebody struggling of course they're, they're usually the easiest and quickest because they don't have to do a lot to do anything this person in particular uh, i asked them well you know what do you do i don't remember exactly but how many clients do you have he has one one client and so you know sounds not good but to me could be good i asked well what'd you do to get that client Pretty simple question because a lot of times that's the solution. That's Wisdom Wednesday for you today. The solution to getting more clients is simply to remember and figure out what you did to get the clients that you have now and just do more of that. So that's what I asked them what to do. And basically it was a cold calling, which is uh, a lot of times counterproductive and can be a grueling amount of grunt work and uh, depressing and uh, miserable thing to do and not at all necessary if you know anything about marketing at all and lead generation of course it doesn't have to be done that way but most business owners choose to remain ignorant and not contact someone like me or somebody else that knows about putting systems into place for lead generation and therefore they are in a constant state of cold calling and or basically having no business and this guy was one of those and so when he told me what he did, oh, he sent, you know, did cold calling, whatever he did. And I was like, well, good news. Congratulations. That's eminently scalable. Congratulations. And immediately, he, and, and so, you know, you can kind of tell why this person, not a, again, I, I'm only an amateur psychologist because direct response marketing is human behavioral psychology plus math. I mean, those are the two elements of it. And in my uh, study of human behavioral psychology, there's no wonder this guy has only one client and probably is pretty close to having zero, is this guy was just an argumentative jerk. Like, why would you choose to argue with somebody who just congratulated you and say, congratulations, that's scalable? And he said, not my definition. That's not scalable, according to me. First of all, who cares? Second of all, you're wrong. It is the definition of scalable, just means it's something that you can systematize and repeat and do more of. You can grow. That's all it means. And he went on and on with his, not my de my definition is scalable means you don't have to do any work. It means you can go off to Jamaica and still make money and all this kind of, well, that's, you know, systematizing the business. Maybe it's not necessarily scaling the scaling again. It just means you can do more of it. So, for instance... A lot of times I'll ask the question, I'll get an answer that's not scalable. So this might be you and your business. I would ask, How'd you, what'd you do to get that one client? And they would say something like, well, you know, uh, I'm a consultant. I, I left the, bid, the business I worked for for 20 years, and now they hired me to do consulting. Well, that's not scalable unless you worked for several other businesses for 20 years, and you can contact them and get contracts too. So that's not something that is repeatable, scalable, something you can do to grow the business. Similarly, if, uh, you know, if he would have said, uh, oh, the one client I have, that's a family member. Not likely that scale unless you have some humongously huge family. I mean, my, my first door-to-door -door sales business I ever did way before my nine-year door-to-door sales career that came uh, about a dozen years later. When I was in college for a summer job, I did this door-to-door -door sales selling pots and pans in China to uh, basically to the moms of teenage girls for their hope chests. And there was a guy who was, hey, thank you, who's that? Hey, Toby Mercer's here, Lee Werner's here. Speaking of my nine-year door-to-door sales career, I had some real fun days and nights and times with Toby Mercer doing some door-to-door -door sales and selling around the truck stop parking lots late at night, and did we have fun or what? And Ed Pudlow is here. And so uh, I once so this door-to-door -door sales thing I did with this China thing. There was a guy who was setting all kinds of records, top salesman, unbelievable, was making all these sales when he first started. 
Well, it ends up this guy was from a humongous family, and he was selling to all his nieces and sisters and whatever and taking the manager, of course, to go with him. And lo and behold, he was selling all kinds of sets of china and pots and pans and whatever. And, uh, but in reality, this guy could not sell and could not prospect. In other words, he could not actually continue any of this success. It wasn't scalable. I mean, once he got done with his nieces and his sisters and he sold 11 sets of china and pots and pans or whatever, how are you going to do number 12? He didn't have any clue of how to go to a stranger, and he didn't have any clue of how to sell to anyone that wasn't going to automatically buy just because it was like, oh, Georgie, let's help him out, and they would sign. So what happened after a couple of weeks of record-setting, he's the super new guy, rising star sales, you know, guy never made another sale and was gone. So that's not scalable. So, again, when this person told me what he did to get a client, and he said, I do cold calling, I don't remember exactly what it was, I was like, congratulations, that's scalable. My advice is do more of that. Do send out some more letters or messages or emails or phone calls or, again, in person. I don't remember what he was doing with some form of cold calling. Do more of that. You know, and once you're tired of that, actually, and you're ready, then you can get to where he, he, he misdefined scalability. You get into my area of expertise, which is putting in marketing, advertising, sales systems in place so that you can automate them, delegate them, and you can go off and gallivant around the world for six months and come back and your business was bigger. Uh, however, my word of wisdom for today on Wisdom Wednesday is don't make that same mistake. Don't confuse the word scalable with automated. Two different things entirely. So when you're first starting out, if you can find something that works, even if it only works to get one customer or one client, one patient, make one sale, if it is something scalable, something you can do over and over, that's good news. Now get to work doing it over and over and over. Simple as that, and you'll have more customers, more sales, more clients, more profit, more of whatever it is you need until you get a point in your business where then you can say, now I want to put some systems into place. Now I want to put some automation into place. So scalability and automated, two completely, totally different things. But this guy allowed himself to argue himself into oblivion because after a while it was like, okay, you win, whatever. Like, have a nice day, and it was nice chatting with you, but uh, n n not only do I not want to chat with you, it's likely almost nobody wants to chat with the guy, and before long, uh, the guy will, it's not a stretch to predict that the guy will join the 95% of businesses that fail in their first five years. Now, I notice, are we hung up on the video? Did it stop? I don't know if anybody can let me know. Hey, Patrick, good to see you here. I don't even know if you can hear me say that. Oh, I am back. I don't know if I was on before all that time, that I was just kind of killing time while I was frozen up on my screen. But, Patrick, great seeing you here. hope you guys had a great Memorial Day and a great May and April, March, February, and January, and you're ready to have a huge June and the rest of the year. So that's it for today, Wisdom Wednesday. Find something scalable, and don't, don't choke yourself off from it by twisting it into some weird non-definition of scalable that has nothing to do with scalable. Scalable just means it's repeatable, and you can do more of it. So find something that works, do more of it, and when you get to a point where the work is overwhelming you and you just can't do more of that, then it's time to delegate, it's time to automate, it's time to really, really scale the thing up through those two methods and make money. But don't disregard the fact you can scale things up even when you're doing grunt work. Just do more of it. Make some money, folks, okay? I hate to see businesses land on the heap of the 90 or 95 percent of businesses that fail in the first five years and not being able to bring in new clients on a consistent basis is pretty much the biggest reason for it. So when you find something that works, do more of it. Simple as that. Then you can contact me or somebody else when you really want to get to the point where I'm ready to really take this thing up and get some delegation, some automation, some systemization of the thing. But scalable and systemizable, or whatever the word is, two totally different things. Anyway. Jared Dog is here, and as always at the end of the video, I go to the questions. Jared Dog is asking, what should we go for first, scaling or automating? And I, I think I just answered that. So I see all the likes, I think, going across the screen. Uh, first, you want to scale up. You want to, you know, a lot of businesses, when you're first starting out, as they say, you're doing everything, right? We're cleaning the toilets. We're answering the phones. We're doing the paperwork. We're doing the sales. We're fulfilling. We're doing everything. So you want to scale that up, but once you get a system in place, something you're doing that works, and you can no longer, you know, put in more hours or make more calls or do more paperwork and stuff yourself, when you can no longer do more stuff yourself, then it's a necessity to either stay small forever, 
you know, to anyone that's read Michael Gerber, the e-myth, that's what he talks about. Most business owners choke themselves off from the possibility of a big business because they insist on staying small and doing everything themselves. And they fall into that trap, and that's why most businesses are small and or fail. Uh, so the automating is for people that are ambitious, forward-thinking, uh, results-oriented, want to grow a business. Then you start thinking autom automation, systemization. But first, think scale. Think, am I doing something that is repeatable? that I can do more of. And so if your whole marketing or business plan consists of, well, I, I go to family members and they become my clients or my customers, or I go to you know, companies I used to work for, or people that uh, my neighbors, or whatever, you're gonna hit a point where that's not really scalable. It's, it's very finite. There's only a few that you can get. That's no way to build a business. So scalable first. Find something that you can do more of, more of, and more of until you are doing all you can do, and then you got to look to automation. Hope that helps. Did that help? Hope that helps. That's it for today, Wisdom Wednesday. Join me again tomorrow for Throwback Thursday, where I will throw it back to something kind of fun, a blast from the past. We'll have fun with that. I'll be back again tomorrow. Thanks, everyone, for being here today. Jer Dog and Lee and Toby and uh, Patrick. And I don't remember everybody else that was on here in the beginning. I know there was somebody else, so if I'm leaving you out here at the end, uh, that's just the way it is. You should have chimed in with a comment somewhere along the way, and I would have seen your name there and remembered you. So please feel free. These aren't meant to be lectures. They're meant to help you best I can, and often the best way I can help you is by you participating and asking your questions and giving me your challenges, and right on the fly, I will provide solutions. That's